Well, hello everybody. Welcome back here to the show, and we're going to continue our look at our Super 8 film collection with Castle Films. Now, Castle Films started way back in 1924 when it was founded. I'm sure it was back that time, and they made films all the way up until about 1977 when Universal 8 Pictures bought them out and continued to make films all the way up to about 1984, just at the time when the VHS Betamax wars were starting and everybody was moving to VHS. So I'm thinking that was the time when they finished any Super 8 production altogether. Now, Castle Films in the day before Universal got their hands on them, they made a very vast variety of films for almost everybody. Got a few of the old catalogues here to take a look at. And uh, first of all, uh, they used to be very heavy in the Frankenstein films. They used to love Frankenstein. Got a whole pile of Frankenstein films up there. Uh, they plugged that one so much. On Super 8 and Stand 8. Then I went to the horror science fiction section. As you can see, I've got some here and plenty more up there. Loads of sci fi and horror films. Of course they had a lot of comedies too, with How to Play Golf, stuff like that, Marx Brothers, uh, way before my time, so I'm not too familiar with these type of comedies myself. And uh, more comedies from cowboy films to Jerry Lewis, and of course they went then to the Hollywood favourites and story classics. Now they must have had a good license back then to you know get a lot of these modern day uh, films of the time to be reproduced on Super 8. Uh, so, you know, they went for almost any type of film they could get their hand on back then. Something like this. They even went for the adventure animal style. So if you're going on a safari to Africa back in the day and you wanted to see what it was like, well then you'd hire one of these out just to get a little bird's eye view on what safari would be like if you went. Westerns again. As you see, loads and loads of westerns, Clint Eastwood and so forth. Uh, they had a pretty good, good vras, variety of them. You know, uh, Flaming Guns, uh, Canadian Pacific, Kabul Trail, Geronimo! Loads and loads and loads. Uh, also, they were pretty popular for their cartoons, especially Woody Woodpecker. Now, I've got a few of those lying around here myself. So plenty for the kiddies to get involved in. Back in the day, with good old Woody Woodpecker, musical cartoons. Also, we had everything from Chili Willies to, well, stuff I've never really heard of before. But Hansel and Gretel, Big Bad Wolf, Big Snooze. Well, you get the picture. Cartoons, again, uh, I've never even heard of them myself. Uh, but yeah. Also, there were big and heavy into the sports films. Now, everything sports-wise, from skiing to Harlem Globetrotting, and of course they loved the boxing series. They had plenty of boxing films uh, coming out on the castle film. So if you're a big sportsman, you had everything in the bag. And of course they used to do stuff like travel. Now this was the YouTube in the day. If you wanted to plan your travel holiday to, say, New York City, you'd hire one of these out just to get a glimpse of what it was like, and what it can be like if you planned your holiday. The only thing it didn't tell you is how to compare the market with any uh, prices or anything like that, but you got the picture back in the day, so yeah. Um, to just imagine that is what the YouTube was back in the day, was just hiring a film of somewhere in the world it did seem a bit closed off back then, but uh, it did the trick. And of course you had your news parades, anywhere from the 40s to the 70s, news reels, they were pretty popular for them, I've got a few of those again myself. And uh, yeah, so what can I say, Castle Films had everybody covered from every genre to everything you liked, from comedy to horror to drama. So, uh, let's take a quick look at what we got here. I've got a few different things here, but Deadly Manish, Revenge of the Creature, Creature Walks Among Us, and of course they came from the Creature from the Black Lagoon movie. And then towards the end of Castle's life, they decided to manufacture these bog standard covers and just change the name on them. Uh, I think they, it was a, a cheaper way to make film covers without reproducing a whole lot of artwork. So they did this one generic cover, 
And you'll see them out there from time to time, and they'll have different titles on them and different films put in the box. Uh, maybe that was a budget thing. Another crazy thing they did back in the time was to give one film many names, like this here. We've got Battle of the Giants and One Million BC. Now, you might think they are two different films altogether. However, they are not. They are two different segments from the same movie, believe it or not. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't understand why they didn't call it Battle of the Giants Part 2. No. Apparently they did this to market it so people would think there's another monster movie on the market and it's completely different from that one. And of course back in the day, if you never saw this whole feature, you'd never know the difference. Good strategy to make more money. But that's great. But these are the same, not the same film, but from the same film. Two different segments. I don't know if that's the beginning or the end. It's one of those. Others they used to do it to. They used to do it to plenty of them, like this one here. Now, this is like the full feature of Destination in a Space. Right? Uh, I've never definitely checked if it's the full feature or not. I don't even have a copy on DVD, so I can't really check it. But I, yeah, I think it's close enough. But again, this one was called Destination in a Space in its original title. When they made the small 200 foot versions, they called them Sea Monster. Same picture, different name. Again, it was just a, a piece cut from this, or pieces cut from this whole film to make it condensed into the 200 version. Um, and again, people saw that going, oh look, Sea Monster. But actually, it came from this movie. But Good little tricks of the trade back then uh, to make more copies of films and to make them more desirable to the public back then. Anyway, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this little walk down uh, Castle Film Lane. And uh, on our next episode, episode number three, in part three, we're going to be taking a look at the Ken Film Collection and checking them out. So for now, everybody, Thanks for watching, and see you again soon. Bye.